Oh, let's see uh, what uh, what kind of skills we got. Well, that wasn't spectacular. It helped. Don't get me wrong. I haven't actually... I should put that on, honestly. That is not as necessary. Let's see if we have any wyvern eggs, actually. We have... Ah, wyvern egg. Let's read this. Oh, well, I didn't even bother to check what that was, but I'm assuming that it's uh, the spell that we need. Do, 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 do. Delusions, is that it? No, that, that one we had. Gambit of the Eight, I think that's it. Well, cool. Okay, well, we uh, spoke with Colin. And, uh, there's a well. All right. They don't seem to really serve much purpose, honestly. Wells. Who needs them? Um, so he said that there are a couple of ways to uh, go through. He said that there's the crossing to the north. Um, we might as well just head north. I don't like the sound of those sleeping glades. Um... Although they probably are easier than dealing with enemies, but killing stuff makes us better at killing stuff. So I think that's, uh, that's what I'm going to stick to here. Go with the one that brung me. Probably should not be so... Oh! So special. Such a special lock. Oh, weird. Before I scan the runes... Holes at the top, holes at the bottom, holes in the middle, but it still holds water. <laughs> holes. Um. Holes. I got holes in different area codes. Holes at the top. Holes at the bottom. In the middle. <laughs> oh, my. Crinty. Um, huh. This is clearly a thinker, and that's not my forte, as we've established. Holes at the top, holes at the bottom, holes in the middle, but it still holds water. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to tab through these a bit. I'll get back with you once I figure this out, which could be a while. It was Sponge! I actually kind of happened upon it on accident, <laughs> to be totally honest with you. <laughs> kind of brute forced it. Oh, these take up spaces in our inventory. No, no, no want. No want that. <laughs> I'm not able to speak, apparently. Alright, we'll take a emerald. Just call me Emerald Legacy. Uh, now that I know what these are for, I don't really, to be frank with you guys, I don't really consider those uh, those dudes, those wyverns, to be much of a threat. Um, oh wait, you have a ton of that. I was thinking I was being really clever. Um, close enough, doesn't matter. Um, so I think I'm actually going to just stow this here. I don't really have much use for it. Um, also, somebody was giving me shit for still having this. <laughs> I don't know why I do it. I just feel bad dumping it here, but I think I'm going to. Um, but then I don't know if I'm going to be back here. I don't know, you guys. I don't know why I'm so clingy about this stuff. 
Um, I think it's just because I'm worried that my experience with RPGs, um, growing up at least, was like playing Final Fantasy VII and Suikoden, for instance, the the Japanese RPGs, where um, as you went through the game, it could be that uh, if you want to get all of the shit, all of the characters, or all the special goodies, you only have a certain amount of time to do it, and oh my god, you have to have this item that you got in the very beginning of the game still, which you probably sold, and all that kind of stuff. And so it's made me really paranoid, and it's really influenced my... I, I've, I've finally figured this out, by the way. This is something that I figured out probably um, just days before um, playing this by watching some of the Awesome Games Done Quick playthroughs. And it, it's, it's made me um, possessive of things. And it was, I, I was watching, I think, like an Earthbound run-through, and I was like, you know... There's some stuff in this game that just doesn't make sense, which is part of why I like it. But also, just some of the things that you have to do are ridiculous. And that's part of, again, part of the allure of Earthbound. It's kind of poking fun at that concept. But, oh my god, I'm talking about something that is just utterly unrelated to this game. Um, yeah, we'll have Owen hold on to the emeralds. Okay. God. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> back in Betrayal at Crondor... So I, I, I just have to, I have to overcome it. I don't know if that's a good chest to leave that in, because again, I don't know if we're going to be back here, but um, if we were in like a more main part of uh, this wonderful gaming world, I would uh, consider it. Now it looks like we can't go any further north, so go so swimming, damn it. Um, I think we're going to have to, oh, let's see how it's sleep. Oh, well then. There's bad people around here. I'm gonna tread lightly through here. I'm also going to save the game. That wasn't very lightly. I don't see anything. Ooh. Okay, then. Just leaving that laying around. To be honest with you, I don't know which way I'm going to go. This is... Is this the... This is a different tent. Okay, Goroth approached the small tent cautiously. He stepped... Or stopped near the front flap and stood perfectly still. Are we just going to stand here? Let's go in! Owen said impatiently. He pushed past Goroth and reached for the tent flap, pulling it aside. Oh shit, the light of a thousand suns exploded around them, <laughs> kicking, turning, and knocking them from their feet in a rush of magical wind and fire. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> that sucks, man. <laughs> I'm gonna camp here, because now I feel stupid. <laughs> okay. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> That's a fire. What's over here? It's another tent. I don't want to go in the tent, but I'm going to click it. Oh. Did I? <laughs> this, is the, this is the place where... Yeah, we talked to that guy. I remember that from watching the uh, previous episode. He's laughing his ass off again. Ho ho ho! Are you making fun of my tent? It's the only tent that I could afford. How about we just do this? Although, what the? Oh, that's that. Okay. No, that doesn't do anything apparently. Okay, so there's the bridge. I'm, I thought that he was saying that there was another way to cross, but apparently not. Gorath motioned for Owen to join him. Oh. If the adversaries we face are any indication, we can expect hardened opponents. Uh-oh. That's not very uh, proper. Should try to conceal that. Maybe think on sexy thoughts. It's a joke about erections. Yep. 
went and made that joke. Kind of regretting it now. Um, perhaps we should try to find a less combative path. Um... Okay. Well, what you were saying... Okay, so maybe that that is the northern crossing, and then there's one further to the south here. Okay, I'll, I'll just follow along the river, and then we'll, we'll go from there. We'll figure it out. We'll work through it. Another one of my uh, gaming idiosyncrasies is, I've mentioned this before, that I like to collect everything and see everything, and, you know, if there's a map in a game, I better, by God, complete the whole thing. She got awful close. Um... Oh, weird. We're talking to the Rosalki. Do not be afraid of me. I can see that your hearts are true. <laughs> By our powers combined. Uh, and as such, I will do you no harm. How do you know such things about us? Yeah, she's just kind of off to the side there. <laughs> it's really great uh, cinematography. I know many things. You are on a quest, are you not? Yes, we are. Can you help us? Not directly, no. Only if he would be willing to find the mortal spellcaster who has been perverting the wheels of my kin with a strange device. Uh oh. <laughs> so take double D batteries? I don't even know what the hell that is. Um, double D? Really? <laughs> Retrieve from this man an item stolen from me. He holds an item named after my own person. Eliam's heart. Return to it and I will do what I may to assist you. Okay. Um... So we got a little subquest there. We need to find the Mord Hell that is perverting the Rusaki. Sounded like distant war drums. Owen stopped and cocked one ear, a puzzled expression on his face. He was about to comment on the strange sound when a cool wind suddenly kicked up swirls of dust around him. Looking up, he was terrified to see the sound was not caused by the beating of drums. It was the beating of a very large pair of wings. The creature landed prepared for combat. Somehow Gorath is now better at scouting. Best not to ask questions, I guess. Um, I would have thought that would dump us in combat, but what what is going? Okay, so these are the blue ones. Now these guys should be vulnerable to fire. Memory serves me right. That's not the spell. I'm just trying to find that uh, spell that uh, Colin or Kaylin. <laughs> so indecisive. I can't pick a goddamn name. Um, that's weird. Oh, maybe, well, I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and cast, uh, Flamecast if I can remember where it is. Thank you. That's gonna do more than 30, though. Yeah, that's gonna do double damage. Good shot, sir. And, uh, now... Oh, nope, 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 nope. Aha! Very clever. Um... Now, he's close to Gorath. Let's see if this does damage to Gorath. It might. It did. Good shot, idiot. See, that's how you do that. <laughs> I should actually have Gorath just go up and stab him. Whatever. There you go. Very effective. And I think Gorath's strength just went... Yeah, Gorath's strength. Uh, just one... One strength that he has. I don't think I can loot these fine fellows. Fine flying fellows. I didn't really finish my thought from earlier, but I, I really do enjoy um, exploring games and seeing seeing all that it has to offer uh, as far as like uh, setting and things like that. Um, 
And that's why, you know, for instance, a good example of that kind of game that would really appeal to me is uh, Uncharted Waters New Horizons. It's, that's part of the games to explore. What's that called? The Bechtel test? I can't remember. Is that actually what it's called? I've taken that multiple times and I'm pretty sure I have consistently ranked as a uh, explorer. Oh, damn it. Oh, that wasn't the right one. Oh, there's a bridge. Okay. Shoot him. And then I'm gonna... This is where it gets a little tricky, because he's gonna actually hurt himself with this, but... We need to take care of that. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, um, since he's so close, this might present a problem. <laughs> I just saw how his, his animation goes. He's like, oh, stop. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, shit. Okay, I need to actually heal Gorath because I've been grab assing around here. Um... <laughs> Damn it. I might cast a very low level flame cast here. The damage will be very slight, but. It'll hurt him, but. That's what we gotta do. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, so here's the other bridge. I'm gonna take this bridge. There's a stump. Let's just get our bearings a little bit too. This... So the other crossing was there. Okay, I got it. Got it. Oh, thank you very much, yeah. We'll take that, but then... Let's just dump off the extra back in there. Cool. Okay. And I've completely forgotten his instructions about the sleeping glade. Which reminds me of Evening Shade. Which, um, I took a class from someone, a fella, who wrote for the show Evening Shade. Um, I wrote, or I, I didn't write shit, actually. Um, I took this class from uh, a guy who had written for that show. It was called uh, Writing the Situation Comedy. And it was a fantastic little class. a little bit of trouble here because of circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Gorath is not going to probably survive this. He keeps getting hit with spells. kill her and then doing some extra damage here and there would really be prudent but again I think that Gorath is about to die yep okay and Owen's about to die now had um 
Gorath not been stunned there, we would have been okay, but... Alas. Yeah, that's not gonna... Not gonna happen. Alright, so we need to try a different approach. But anyways, back to my story. My really, really riveting story that started off with, um... A little, uh, confusion there about what was happening. I didn't write an episode of Evening Shade or anything like that. Uh, where are we? Oh, we're right. We're pretty close. Okay. Um. Are we? Okay. Okay. Um. There's actually nothing really more to it. I took a class from a guy that <laughs> wrote for Evening Shade. He said that Burt Reynolds is a huge asshole. Like, a really not a good guy. And you kind of get that impression that he's kind of full of shit and not pleasant to be around anyways. But I felt very validated by that. Alright, here we go.